Welcome to Ace My Exams Learning. Let us get started with today's learning. Ecology and Agroecology, Grade 10 Agricultural Sciences. Basic Concepts 1. Ecology. Ecology is the branch of biology that studies how living organisms interact with each other and with their physical environment. These relationships are essential for maintaining balance in nature. For example, in a grassland ecosystem, grasses provide food for herbivores like cattle, while the cattle help fertilize the soil through their waste. Understanding these interactions is vital for sustainable living and agricultural practices. 2. Agroecology Agroecology is a specialized area of ecology that applies ecological principles to farming. It focuses on understanding how organisms, plants, animals, and microorganisms interact with their environment in an agricultural setting. By studying these relationships, farmers can make better decisions to create farming systems that are productive, sustainable, and environmentally friendly. For instance, planting cover crops can improve soil health and reduce the need for chemical fertilizers. 3. Agroecosystems a farm is considered an agroecosystem because it includes crops, livestock, soil, and other elements that work together like a natural ecosystem. Recognizing a farm as an agroecosystem helps us manage it effectively and sustainably. Importance of agroecology and agroecosystems. 1. Choosing the right plants and animals. Agroecology helps farmers select crops and livestock that are best suited to the local environment. For example, in a dry area, farmers might choose drought-resistant crops like sorghum or hardy livestock like goats. 2. Efficient use of land. By understanding ecological principles, farmers can use their land more efficiently to produce food, fuel, and fibers. For instance, incorporating agroforestry, planting trees alongside crops, can provide additional resources like wood and fruit while improving soil and protecting against erosion. 3. Preserving resources for the future. Sustainable farming practices ensure that the land remains productive for future generations. Techniques like crop rotation, organic farming, and conservation tillage reduce environmental damage and maintain soil health. For example, rotating legumes with cereals can naturally replenish nitrogen in the soil, reducing the need for chemical inputs. Levels of Ecological Organization Ecological organization helps us understand how living things interact with each other and their environment. It can be visualized as a ladder, starting from the smallest level and building up to the largest. Below is the arrangement of levels of ecological organization, from the smallest to the largest. 1. Individual An individual is a single organism, such as one cow on a farm or a single tree in a field. This is the smallest level of ecological organization. Every individual interacts with its environment to survive by eating, growing, and reproducing. For example, a cow eats grass for energy, and its waste helps improve soil fertility. These interactions show that the actions of one individual contribute to the population it belongs to. 2. Population a population is a group of organisms of the same species living in one area. For instance, a herd of cows grazing in the same pasture forms a population. Within a population, organisms interact by mating to produce offspring, competing for resources like food and water, and supporting the growth of their species. If many individuals survive and reproduce successfully, the population grows, contributing to the health of the ecosystem. 3. Community. A community includes all the different populations of plants, animals, and other organisms living and interacting in the same area. For example, in a field, cows population, grass population, and insects population make up a community. These populations depend on each other, cows eat grass for food, while insects pollinate crops. Changes in one population, such as a decline in grass, can affect the entire community, showing the interconnectedness of living organisms. 4. Ecosystem 
An ecosystem consists of all the living organisms in a community and the non-living components of their environment, such as soil, water, and sunlight. For example, a farm is an ecosystem where crops, livestock, soil, water, and weather work together. Energy flows through food chains, such as cows eating grass and humans drinking milk, while nutrients cycle through the soil and plants. Any disruption in the ecosystem, like a drought, can have widespread effects, emphasizing the importance of balance within these systems. 5. Biomes Biomes are large ecological regions characterized by distinct climates, flora, and fauna. Different climates divide the land into smaller environments called biomes or ecological regions. Each biome contains similar types of plants and animals that are adapted to its conditions. Examples of biomes include a. Forests, dominated by trees and home to diverse species such as birds and fungi. b. Savanna, grasslands interspersed with trees, supporting animals like lions and elephants. c. Grasslands, open fields of grasses that support herbivores like cattle. d. Finbos, unique to South Africa, featuring shrubs and species such as proteas and sugarbirds. e. Succulent Karoo, known for its succulent plants adapted to arid conditions, housing animals like tortoises. F. Namakaru, a semi-desert biome with hardy shrubs and grasses, sustaining species like springbok. G. Thicket, dense vegetation areas providing habitats for various animals and birds. Biomes contain many ecosystems that share similar environmental conditions. For example, Grasslands include ecosystems with grazing herbivores and predators adapted to open spaces. 6. Biosphere The biosphere is the largest level of ecological organization. It is that part of our planet Earth, including the crust, water, and air, that supports living organisms. The biosphere encompasses all ecosystems on Earth, from the deepest oceans to the highest mountains. There are three main environments within the biosphere. A. The sea, marine environments housing organisms like fish and plankton. B. Freshwater, rivers, lakes, and wetlands that provide habitats for species like frogs and algae. C. Land, terrestrial environments, from deserts to forests, that support plants, animals, and microorganisms. The biosphere demonstrates the interconnectedness of all life on Earth. Farming practices, for example, can have positive effects on the biosphere, such as improving soil health, or negative effects, like causing pollution. Recognizing the importance of the biosphere reminds us of our responsibility to care for our planet and maintain its balance for future generations. Components of ecosystems An ecosystem is a complex system made up of living and non-living components that interact with each other. To understand how ecosystems function, we need to look at both the abiotic non-living and biotic living factors that shape them. Let's explore these components in more detail. 1. Abiotic factors. Abiotic factors are the non-living parts of an ecosystem that directly influence the environment and the organisms living in it. These factors include the land's physical features, climate, and soil properties. Physiographic factors. Physiographic factors refer to the physical features of the land, such as rivers, hills, mountains, and valleys. These natural landforms influence the climate and significantly impact plant growth. By understanding these factors, we can better predict how they shape ecosystems and agriculture. The three main physiographic factors are slope, aspect, and altitude. A. Slope. The slope of the land is a critical factor that determines how water moves during rainfall. Water runoff on slopes affects soil moisture, which in turn influences the types of plants that can grow and thrive in an area. The degree of steepness plays a significant role in how much water the soil can retain. Types of slopes There are three primary types of slopes, each with distinct characteristics that affect water retention and plant growth. 1. Flat land. Flat land absorbs water more effectively because rainwater has time to seep into the soil. 
This results in higher soil moisture levels, supporting abundant plant growth and promoting fertile conditions for agriculture. 2. Gentle slopes. Gentle slopes experience moderate water runoff. Some water is absorbed into the soil, but a portion flows downhill. These slopes can still support healthy plant growth, but the soil may require conservation measures, such as contour plowing, to reduce erosion and improve water retention. 3. Steep slopes. Steep slopes have rapid water runoff, which reduces the amount of water that infiltrates the soil. This limits plant growth, as the soil often becomes dry and less fertile. Additionally, steep slopes are more prone to erosion, which can strip away the topsoil, further reducing the land's ability to support vegetation. Practical Implications Understanding the impact of slope on water movement and soil fertility is essential for managing agricultural and natural ecosystems. For example, on flat land, farmers can plant water-intensive crops like rice or maize due to the high water retention. On gentle slopes, contour farming or terracing can be used to slow water runoff and conserve soil. On steep slopes, hardy, drought-resistant plants such as certain grasses or shrubs are better suited to survive. B. Aspect. Aspect refers to the direction a slope faces, usually described as north, south, east, or west. This orientation plays a crucial role in determining the microclimate of the slope by influencing sunlight exposure, temperature, and moisture levels. North-facing slopes in the southern hemisphere receive the most direct sunlight throughout the day. This consistent exposure results in these slopes being generally hotter and drier. The prolonged sun exposure accelerates evaporation, reducing moisture levels in the soil. As a result, the conditions on north-facing slopes are well suited to drought-resistant plants. Species such as aloes and acacias thrive in these arid environments due to their ability to store water and endure high temperatures. South-facing slopes in the southern hemisphere experience less direct sunlight, particularly during the hottest parts of the day. This reduced exposure creates cooler and moister conditions compared to their northern counterparts. The higher humidity and lower temperatures on these slopes make them ideal for moisture-loving plants. For instance, ferns, which require damp and shaded environments, are commonly found thriving on south-facing slopes. West-facing slopes are characterized by exposure to the intense afternoon sun, which makes them warmer and drier during the latter part of the day. While not as extreme as the conditions on north-facing slopes, the afternoon heat presents challenges for vegetation. However, plants with moderate drought tolerance adapt well to these environments. Drought-tolerant grasses, for example, can withstand the fluctuating temperatures and reduced moisture on west-facing slopes. East-facing slopes benefit from sunlight during the cooler morning hours, creating conditions that allow these slopes to retain more moisture compared to west-facing ones. The gentle morning sun and mild temperatures provide an environment that supports plants requiring less intense sunlight and consistent water availability. Flowering plants, such as lilies, flourish on east-facing slopes, taking advantage of the cooler temperatures and higher moisture levels. C. Altitude. Altitude refers to the height above sea level and plays a significant role in shaping climatic conditions. As altitude increases, the temperature decreases. This phenomenon occurs because the atmosphere, which retains and distributes heat, becomes thinner at higher elevations. As a result, Higher altitudes are generally cooler than lower-lying areas. One of the notable effects of altitude is its ability to cause significant changes in climate over relatively short distances. For example, mountainous regions often experience a variety of microclimates, with lower slopes being warmer and more humid, while higher elevations are cooler and drier. This variation influences vegetation, wildlife, and human activities, making altitude an essential factor in understanding local and regional climate patterns. To access more learning and exam preparation materials, go to www.acemyexams.coza.
This link is also in the video description below. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe and be the first to know when we upload new videos.